Hello everyone, I'm Sam Copeland, National Master on the content team here at chess.com, and I'm here today with another brilliant win from Leela Chess Zero. This game also comes from our 200 game simulation match between Leela and Stockfish 8, a match in which Leela was dominant, surpassing the performance of Alpha Zero in similar match circumstances. In this game, we see that Leela is able to create resources and opportunity in even a simple endgame showing magic in the simplest of positions. This game begins with the four knights. Leela has white and Stockfish 8 has black. The four knights, which obviously gets its name from the placement of the four knights right here, is one of the oldest chess openings. As such, it's very well studied and it's hard to get a significant advantage with either side. After d4 and the exchange, we get an exchange on c6 and soon black is going to push pawn to d5. That's going to result in an exchange on d5. Black is going to emerge with three pawn islands against white's two pawn islands. So white theoretically has a small structural advantage, but black tends to have really good piece activity to compensate. We're going to see some natural moves here as both of the opponents here are continuing their development, completing development, and also contesting the only open file on the board, the open e file. Often when there's one open file and both players contest it, we're going to see an exchange of rooks. That will happen here, but not for a little while. We have an exchange here on f4, and after b3 to defend b2, white is striking out, and Leela wants to exchange the knights and threaten to capture here on h7. Now, how do you respond? In the game, Stockfish 8 responds with pawn g6, and maybe this is a little bit of a mistake, fixing a pawn on a light square. Maybe pawn h6 was better. Certainly, the way that the game develops, the pawn structure is going to be a problem for Stockfish 8. Now, queen h4, pawn c5, queen to g5, queen d6, queen d2, a lot of queen maneuvering, and now pawn to d4. It really doesn't make a very strong impression to fix the black pawns here in the middle of the board, but again, this probably shouldn't be decisive. It is going to lead to problems as the game develops, though. Pawn h4. As is often the case, Leela is eager to use the rook pawns, especially the h pawn, to advance, maybe create some attacking ideas, but also often just to gain space. So after h4, we see bishop c6, and then pawn a4, we've struck forward with the rook pawns on both wings. Now, pawn to h5, queen to g5, we get king g7, and f4. Finally, we see some tangible ideas from Leela, the idea of f5, can be a problem breaking up the defense of the black king and also creating some real targets for this light squared bishop. So after f4 we get an exchange on e1, rook e8, and instead of an immediate exchange I like this move a lot from Leela. Rook to e5, gaining more space. Now after the exchange here I have to say I don't think that as a human player I would really want to pursue this position. In this position, it looks like this pawn could be very weak. Are we really pressing here as white? As it turns out, yes we are. In general, it's becoming hard for black to move pieces. We're going to see that problem through the rest of the game. So this is a very deep and subtle positional evaluation from Leela, appreciating that there's actually quite a significant advantage in this position. Here queen to e6, and now pawn to a5, clamping down further, again using those rook pawns to gain space and create some combinational opportunities in some cases. Bishop d5, king f2, the king is ready to encroach, and in this position, black is kind of struggling for a move. So king g8, you have to move the king back. This is a great moment to pause your video and try to figure out how you can make progress with the white pieces. In this position, Leela plays a strong move that to me as a human is very unintuitive, queen to f6. Now, after the exchange on f6, which is not really forced, but otherwise the queen on f6 is very strong and unpleasant, we see the e-pawn recapture. And as a human, I would instinctively feel like this pawn is going to be weak. It's very distant from the rest of my forces. However, actually, this pawn is doing two things. First, it's really binding this black king. This is a theme that you'll see over and over again in Leela games. The advance of a pawn, maybe an F pawn, maybe an H pawn, into the opponent's castle position, and it becomes difficult for the opponent's king to become active in an endgame. That is a repeated winning theme. 
Also, after the exchange here on F6, this pawn on F7 is fixed and it can become a serious target in a lot of endgames. So after the exchange here on f6, we see king to e8 trying to activate the king, which could become boxed in by bishop b5 if you don't activate it soon. So now we see king to g3, the white king is activating, king up to d7, and king to f4. Now, in this position, there is a critical decision for black. What would you play? Would you capture the pawn that has just been sacrificed on g2, or would you activate the black king? This is one of the very few cases where I think we can definitively say that a super strong chess engine messed up. In this position, Stockfish played king to d6. We're going to look at why this move doesn't work in a moment, but ultimately I think there's no salvation after king to d6. An alternative is king to e6, but king e6 allows bishop e4. Ultimately, there's going to be a bishop exchange, and this seems to win for white. For example, if you exchange bishops right away, then after the trade, you can pick up a pawn on f6, but king d5 is picking up a more important pawn and winning the game. So what about the capture on g2? This is the right move. After bishop takes g2, there are multiple move orders, but the ideas seem to be the same in all lines. White is going to pressure f7. Black is going to go super passive defending f7. But when you try to press forward, Black always has pawn to g5, creating a passed h-pawn. This passed h-pawn is going to require supervision from the white king, and because of that, white is not going to be able to press in this position. It's a draw. Missing this resource and playing king d6 definitely seems to be the losing mistake. After king d6, we see now pawn to g4. There's no more pawn on g2 to capture, and we get a trade here. The white route is now king up and to g7, king e6 and king g5. White has an immediate threat. Bishop takes g6. After a trade here, the f-pawn is running up the board. The only move for black is bishop back to c6 so that after a capture on g6, you have the critical defense bishop back to e8. But that's already indicating that black is starting to run out of moves. After bishop c6, we see pawn to a6 clamping down and taking away some of white's moves or some of black's moves. And now we see bishop back to e8, another very, very passive move, bishop c4 check, king e5. And now in this position, pause your video and see if you can find the excellent idea that Leela played to place black in Zugzwang. Leela played the beautiful and simple pawn to b4, a pawn sacrifice to create Zugzwang. After the pawn capture, there is just bishop to b3, and in this position, if black could do nothing, there would be no problems. White could not make progress, but black must move. And after king to e4, white's king is ready to invade, king h6. Now, if you did this previously, the black king would just capture your pawn, but unfortunately, the black king had to advance. So, in this position, f7 is falling after the king invades. From a computer perspective, this is just over, but from a human perspective, it's not so easy yet. Black has some counterplay. Pawn to d3. Black is going to create a passed pawn and queen that passed pawn. Leela is unperturbed, though. After captures on f7, black is going to queen first, but after pawn f7, the extra queen and extra move do nothing for stockfish. White is just going to be up a piece. From here, it's a mopping up operation, but in the computer chess championship, the engines always play on the mate. So I'm going to zip through the rest of the moves because I do have one puzzle left for you. In the position right before the final position, as the black king is driven to the corner of the board, I want to ask you, how many checkmate in one move uh, options does Leela have here? Post in the comments if you're able to find all of them. In the game, the selected checkmate in one is queen to b1. I hope that you've enjoyed this end game from Leela. I find it super instructive. I hope to use some of these ideas in my own games at some point. If you want to see more games from Leela, then simply click on the playlist that is on top of your screen.